Hey friends, welcome to a little of it all. My name is Taylor. On this channel, we mainly do cash stuffing and budgeting videos, but don't be surprised if you see a video pop up on travel or maybe cooking because I do love a little of it all. Thanks so much for choosing me to spend some time with today, friends. Whether you've been hanging out for a while or this is your first time, I really appreciate it. My husband and I are on a journey to buy a house this year. Then we are growing our binder collection and expanding our sinking funds. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss a single update on that fun, exciting adventure we are on. We would absolutely love to have you join us and give this video a big thumbs up so I'll know that you're here. Guys, we have a fun one today. We are making some envelopes today and the giveaway winner is going to be announced. So make sure you stay tuned to this video and let's get it started. So um, today we are going to be finishing up making, I've already made several envelopes. But we're gonna be finishing up making my envelope for Discovery Plus, my tithing envelope, my envelope for Peacock, um, Electricity, Universal Yums, and then our water envelope. I tried to pick ones that were like looked different and had like a different vibe to them. Um, so that's why it's an array of different things um, that we are making envelopes for. And then I already have three of my six um, quote unquote envelope sleeve uh, lamination sheets cut, but let's cut three more. So, to make the envelopes that I'm going to be making today, um, you are going to need a paper cutter or just to be able to cut paper. And we're going to be using my new paper cutter today that I love. I'm so glad I got this paper cutter. It is um, so much better than my old one. I really, really like it. Um, so we're gonna need this paper cutter and we are gonna need five mil laminating sheets. I have found that I like the five mil better. They're just more structurally sound. So I am just making all of my envelopes from now on with five mil laminating sheets. And we are going to the measurements that I like to use is three by seven but first and foremost you want to cut off the rounded edges I guess you don't have to do this but I like to I like to just cut it off give me a nice even surface to work with here so make sure both of those ends are cut off Happy Sunday, guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you had a good weekend and you were prepping for a good start to your week. February is almost over. Can we believe that? Oh, time is weird, huh? Like, months are just flying by. I'm going to recut this. I'm going to cut this very straight. Okay, so then, like I said, I just like the three by seven. So I start out by measuring three inches across and we can see three inches here and I go over just like just a hair but not like too much and make sure it's flat all the way up to the top so three so then I go seven across so we went three high and then seven across so seven And we are done with our paper cutter for right now. Not forever, but definitely for right now. So I'll just put this to the side because we're not going to need it until we have everything laminated. So we have our six little pockets right here. And then I, you know, like everyone says, what you do is you take a sip of your tea and then... <laughs> you take your laminating sheets you pull them apart and you make the shiny sides touch okay so my shiny sides are touching and then I'm going to grab my first <clears throat> uh, little um, name that we're gonna be doing and we're gonna start with water 
and grab my Cricut transfer tape. Do y'all like Cricut transfer tape, those of you that use like vinyl and stuff like that, or is there a better one out there? Um, you know, everybody has their favorites, but the bundle that I got um, just had a Cricut transfer tape with it, and so I was like, oh, I'll just use the Cricut transfer tape until I run out, and then I'll get suggestions from other people and see what they like. Um, so let me know if there's anything better. So I measured all of this in Cricut and designed all of these in Cricut. Their measurements are also three by seven. Um, hindsight's 50-50. I should have probably made these just a little bit smaller to make it easier for my envelopes. Um, but you know, I didn't. And so it's okay. Everything that I've made so far has turned out, I think looking really good. Y'all will have to tell me when I show you everything in just a second. Um, but, um, you know, you live and you learn. So if I ever make any envelopes ever again, I'll know to just make my words that I'm going to be putting on my envelopes just a hair smaller, than what I'm going to make my pockets. Um, so <laughs> there's no, it's not hard to line everything up. So, you know, water's going to be a little bit difficult for me to pull up. And then I just turn it over like this. I grab my envelope. I make sure that I am dealing with the opaque side, the not see-through side, whatever you want to call it, the non-shiny side. And then I make that part touch the inside, the sticky part of my vinyl. And I'm just lining this up as best I can, as close as I can. And I'm wanting it, I'm doing it with the top because I'm making envelopes with holes at the bottom. So if I go a little bit over, like if the vinyl doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna be okay because you know, there's gonna be extra at the bottom where the, um, the holes are gonna be, where the extra is gonna be. Um, so that's why I'm making sure the top is lined up correctly and the top looks good. And that way, if there's hangy down down here at the bottom, then that is gonna work perfectly fine because there's gonna be extra down here at the bottom where the holes are. So, water's looking good. I loved the color that I picked for water too. I was like, oh, water. Kind of looks like the color of some water some places. Can y'all imagine living by water that looks like this color? Oh, what a dream that would be. Oh my goodness. We live um, in the south and we go to the beaches sometimes. Um, but the beaches in the state where I live are not pretty, but we travel to like Florida and to Destin and things like that. They have pretty beaches that have, that has water that's pretty. So water is done. So I am just gonna set water to the side and I'm gonna move on to my next one. Okay, we have them all stuck on and ready to go. So our next step is to grab another five mil laminating sheet and stick these little pockets inside our five mil laminating sheet. So 
I am going to make sure that I've got all of my backs together just real fast. All right, so I am going to grab another five mil laminating sheet and we're gonna get started on that. Okay, I have two more laminating sheets. I've got one more over here. But what I have learned and what I like to do is I start out, I grab my laminating sheet. I'm not cutting this one at all. So all rounded corners will stay where they are. And what I like to do is I open up the laminating sheet. I go ahead and I do open it up all the way. But then I fold it back over just like this. Hopefully you guys can see that and that's in full frame to where like it has like a little like loop and it stays up like an open by itself. I don't know why that helps me, but that has helped me for some reason to be able to keep things straight and keep things in order. And it like helps secure the little pockets when I stick them in there. So for me, and I think everyone that makes envelopes, um, you get three envelopes per um, laminating sheet. So I'm gonna start with water. And I'm going to try to make sure I don't have any dog hair here. And I'm just going to stick it in like this. And I used to like shove it up as far as I could um, at the top up here. But I don't really do that anymore. I just kind of get it to where it's secure. And then I make sure my two laminating pieces, my two little pockets are lined up as good as they can be all the way around. You know, it's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but just get it as good as you can. Okay, so that is looking good. Then I just kind of close it, turn it like this, and you make sure to turn it because I, for these, if you're making envelopes that you're going to punch holes in, um, you know, you wanna be able to make sure that you're putting the holes on the bottom. So, um, I guess you could, like I could have put it in like this and just scooted this one all the way up to the top. But, um, I don't like to do that. I like to turn it and have them both kind of the bottoms facing out. So, again, getting them lined up as good as I can to start with. Okay, and then sticking it in right here and just kind of looking up underneath the fold. That's why I guess I like, you can probably hear it, I kind of sound funny right now, maybe a little muffled. And making sure that this edge is as even as it can be. And then I just kind of place my finger there, grab it, let it go. This is looking good. I'm loving this. And then I kind of fold it down again just to kind of hold everything still. And then I'm gonna grab one more little pocket. And then we are going to put the last one in. Being careful not to move those that you just put in there. Put the last one in at the bottom. Now this one is a little bit tricky because you don't have a fold to kind of secure it by. So you got to be careful with him. Giving yourself enough room at the top to cut between your other two and also making sure you have enough room at the bottom if you're creating envelopes that you're gonna punch holes in that you have enough space at the bottom to do that. I'm just trying to make sure it's even. I think that looks even enough, making sure my two laminating pieces are lined up. Okay, this is looking good. And then I just kind of slowly fold over top. Let's see where those dog hairs are. Okay, they're on top. <laughs> okay, and then just given one more glance through this one looks like it has moved a tiny bit so I'm just gonna pop him back straight and this is 
looking good. So let's run this through the laminator. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side. We'll get the other ones set up and run through and then we'll cut them. we have our two laminated sheets ready to be cut and I think now would be a great time to announce our giveaway winner so here we go all right guys it's time to pick our winner so let's start okay yay Re and there she is! Yay! I'm so excited! Yay! There is our winner! So, let's get these bad boys cut out. Oh, there was something in this one and it got laminated in, but it's okay. Okie dokie. Cutting these out. I start with this one first. I love this paper cutter so much because it has like a, almost looks like a guitar string that tells you like where the cut is gonna be the only thing is uh, is on the envelopes um, <laughs> I can't really see it um, because you know it's clear um, obviously clear envelopes but if I look just hard enough or I bet if I like had put colored paper underneath this before I cut um, I would have been able to see it um, but that's okay So, Universal Yums is up first, giving it a trim on the sides. And then off the top, my finger out of the way. I think that's gonna be perfect. So let's see if I was all right. Yes, I was. And then just a hair off of the bottom. that looks good okay let's do the rest Beautiful! Yay! Now let's run them through the laminator just one more time individually to make sure they are sealed and good to go. Okay, we are good to go. Two things I wanted to show you guys real quick. You can see it, I think, on this one, best of all. When I was talking about how my design was going um, past my little pocket length, but I wasn't worried about it, it's because my overall envelope was going to be bigger. And yes, like I can see it and you guys can probably see like here and here and here and here like these flowers went over and like you can see the cut off here and here but like these are not professional envelopes no one is going to see these or use these except for me and that doesn't bother me it's like as long as the whole design is there I am happy with that um, and one thing I wanted to point out to you also if you guys decide to run your envelopes back through um, if it reseals like this one did for me it is no worries all you have to do is just run your paper cutter over it again and it will just you know unseal it 
palette at the top, but I'm not going to do that on camera. We'll do that. I'll do that later. Um, so next step for me is going to be to round my corners. I got a paper, I got a corner rounder and I have become obsessed with it. I was not sure if it was going to work, if I was going to like it, but I really like it. And I just wanted to show you guys how I use it. So I flip my whatever I'm rounding on the back. I hold this upside down to make sure that I can see the corner and make sure that it's like lined up properly. And then I just round it out. I don't really have a method to choosing like which size corner rounder I pick. Um, I probably should have waited to round these corners because I'm going to have to recut this envelope, but that's okay. Um, it's just whatever I'm feeling, you know, whatever size, you know, corner I think it needs to be. If it's like a really big something, um, it will be the bigger one. You know, I probably could have used the bigger corner, um, option on these. Um, and if it's a, if it's a tiny thing, like a savings challenge or something like that, I will use, um, the smaller option. The only thing with doing your, um, your holding your corner rounder like this is the little corner pieces pop up everywhere, but that's okay for me because I would much rather see my corner, make sure it's placed in correctly. Um, and that I'm going to get that perfect rounded edge that I want versus, you know, just kind of winging it and hoping that everything turns out okay. Again, this is the hole puncher that I can't decide if I like it or not, but it's working for me right now and I don't want to spend the money on another one. So I just kind of line it up to try to make sure my holes are centered and even and punch it out. And last but not least, the final step is to put it in our binder. And before I do that, I just wanted to show you guys all of the envelopes that I have made for our bill binder. So we've already seen these guys. I'm not gonna show these to you again. But these are the other ones. Some of the designs are the same, but not all of them. So we've got Good RX, MPE. This is my teacher's insurance. Disney Plus. I don't know if I'll do a design in anything like this ever again. This was really hard. Same with ESPN Plus. This was really hard but it's super cute. Internet, I really like. Apple storage. State Farm. Google Plus. Cell phone. trash and storage unit and those are the envelopes for the bill binder so let's get them put in I don't think I'm gonna put them in any particular order right now let's just get them in there and everything is centered everything is even on the sides nothing is hanging out one side or the other love that big fan bill binder is ready to go and ready to be stuffed with prop money i'm so excited all right guys that wraps it up for this video um i hope you guys had fun i hope you maybe learned something or saw maybe a different technique or way of doing things or just had fun hanging out with me. I had fun hanging out with you guys. I appreciate you guys being here. Y'all are the absolute best. Thank you for spending some time with me. Don't give up doing great things. You guys are awesome. I'll see you guys next time. Bye friends.